in this week's video uh, I'm going to show you how to make yourself look like a complete idiot uh, fix a serious problem with the refrigeration it stopped working uh, building a hooker to be able to clean the bottom of the boat yourself and also install the bilge pump which didn't go to plan uh, one thing that did go to plan was some new lighting for the cockpit um, which I'm quite pleased with. Quite a novel idea actually um, and very cheap so I hope you enjoy it. So I thought it was time for a haircut. I was getting a bit fluffy so I brought my trusty hair trimmer from Australia got myself all prepped up to have a hair, give myself a haircut and I forgot Australia runs on 220, 240 volts and Mexico on 110. So it was absolutely useless. Um, I think I needed to buy a new one. Well, that was a bit of an adventure, wandering around La Paz in 106 degree heat, trying to find uh, a hair clipper. But um, there it is, uh, all done. And uh, as it's Mexican Independence Day, I thought I would um, have a haircut and I've also had a shave. So uh, all ready to go out tonight uh, for a walk along the Malecon. It should be absolutely packed with people. It's a lot of fun watching people on the, on the Malecon, all the families, um, loud music everywhere. But uh, yeah, it's got a really good atmosphere and I thoroughly enjoy it. So uh, that's the plan for tonight. Sometimes it's not just things on the boat that need fixing. Um, other things break, like my flip-flop yesterday uh, when I was watching the Mexican uh, Day of Independence. So I found another use for 5200. It works brilliantly, so uh, no need to buy a new pair of flip-flops. Hi, uh, my friends turned up from uh, San Francisco last night and brought down a load of goodies for me to do some upgrades on the boat and one of the things I've done on previous boats which has worked really well is to make up my own hooker system so I can clean the bottom of the boat I can't hold my breath for very long so I need air um, it's also very useful for uh, checking whether there's anything caught around the prop it's very simple um, and you can operate this if you've got a Honda generator the 2000i or if you've got a 2000 watt um, inverter. All you need is one of these, a small oilless air compressor. This cost me about uh, 160 bucks, um, which is quite cheap. Um, I'll just move this out of the way. And then my friend built this. To, uh, so the legs of the compressor sits in, I can then mount this in the aft lazarette and uh, just connect the hose straight to that um, without having to take it out each time. So I've just got to paint this but um, that's a, an added bonus for me. All you need is 50, uh, 50 feet of uh, high pressure hose from Home Depot, uh, very cheap and then you need obviously a uh, second stage or first stage, I'm not sure which, um, regulator, and then a few fittings to change the different um, thread sizes. But um, to put it all together, it's extremely simple. You take this off there, connect this coupler, Connect this coupler, which takes it down to the size of the regulator. Obviously, using uh, PF tape, you take this off the regulator, screw that into there. Oops, like so, and then. I think all up, including a fairly cheap um, regulator, the, the uh, hose and the compressor was probably something south of 250 bucks. And there you have it. Now you've got air under the water, 
whenever you want it for cleaning the bottom, removing debris, checking the prop, changing anodes. Um, you can do it out in remote anchorages. Um, you can do it in the marinas if you want, save you a fortune paying other people to, to do it if the water is warm enough. Um, if not, buy a wetsuit. But um, this has proved extremely useful uh, in, on previous boats and um, it's good fun and it makes cleaning the bottom uh, easy. It only takes oh, probably about an hour um, to do a 40 foot boat, maybe a slightly longer. Um, and it's great for the water is warm. So, Hopefully you'll find this useful, uh, as I say, it's done me proud in the past and it was the first thing I did um, when Bill said he was going to be able to bring stuff down for me, I said get me an air compressor um, and then he found all the other bits that uh, need to go with it. But uh, there it is, that's part one of uh, a number of projects that I've now got to do. Uh, I think the next will be to put the new um, bilge pump in which I will do once he finds where it is in his car. The other thing you can do um, is throw the Honda in the dinghy with the compressor and um, if you need to go shallow diving up to um, 40 feet, uh, you can uh, anchor the dinghy, maybe even tow it behind you and uh, use it as sort of uh, a scuba setup, um, which I've done in the past. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's a lot of hassle getting everything together, but it does work. Um, and it's something I'll probably try again. There's got to be easier ways of doing it. The other thing which uh, I also do is when I'm cleaning the bottom of the boat, I bought myself a cheap rock climbing helmet. And although you look kind of um, stupid, um, you can stick this on. Main thing is it stops your head getting ripped up with barnacles. Again, as long as you don't mind looking stupid. Um, but also um, you can actually hang vertically in, in the water um, with the helmet resting on the bottom of the boat and it frees your hands. So you can um, uh, clean the bottom uh, easier. I found this to be extremely useful. I've also mounted a um, GoPro mount on it so I can uh, film some me cleaning the bottom which I'm sure you'll all thoroughly enjoy. Um, it'll be a very short video because I'll speed it up. Uh, but overall the whole setup uh, very effective, very efficient and it's actually quite good fun. In the long run it saves you a lot of money paying people to clean your bottom or if you're like me you can't hold your breath for very long it turns something into that's very tedious and difficult uh, has to be done over an extended period into something that's very easy uh, to do and very um, fairly quick actually. So there it is. That's the uh, that's this project and on to the next. So we had a little unplanned maintenance this afternoon. The refrigerator stopped working, which in a hundred degree heat is not a good thing. So uh, I had to clear out the uh, half lazarette to get at the refrigerator pump and there it is now working again. It was the um, fan had stopped working and it overheated so I had to replace the fan and then when I put it all back together again, it still didn't work. Um, and playing around with the fuses, it uses micro fuses. Um, one of them was there, but this little contraption here was obviously made up by the previous owner because he didn't have a micro fuse. Um, I tried to get it in place, it was so fragile. The fan came off, the fan switched off. I came on again. In the end I just took a piece of stiff wire and uh, put it in there to replace this fuse and I'll go hunting for a, a micro fuse 15 amp tomorrow but uh, yeah that was um, oh, three hours of messing around um, but uh, thankfully thankfully uh, it's now back working again and um, 
uh, should be able to get a final solution for it tomorrow but uh, wasn't on the uh, list of things to do today but uh, that's boats well just had the second cup of coffee and I think it's time to uh, install the bilge pump um, already put quick connects on the end and there's quick connects the other end should be um, pretty quick and easy um, it'll slot into the existing uh, mount that's down there and uh, just connect up the hose so hopefully when I flick the switch uh, it'll work uh, if not it could be the um, float but I've got a replacement for that as well just in case so we'll see well first issue is it looks like the mount is broken so I'll have to uh, get that one out and uh, put the new mount in new bilge, bilge pump installed what I thought was going to be an easy job uh, not so much um, little whinge on manufacturers when you have a replacement part ie exactly the same as the old part why do you have to change the screw holes on the base plate because they didn't line up I had to re-drill everything but anyway it's in and um, I switched it on and of course it didn't work which was uh, a bit of a disappointment and then I remembered <laughs> the old bilge pump when it packed up must have caused some sort of electrical circuit break or something and it blew a fuse so I simply had to um, change these uh, change the fuse in the board here and uh, then I went to switch it on and yay it works what I thought was going to take 20 minutes was an hour and a half but joyous fun and it was like being in a free sauna dripping with sweat um, but it's in and I even managed to clean the bilge up a bit which you probably can't see but it was pretty disgusting before so yeah another job done and uh, a uh, winning solution so I'm happy to report that the refrigeration is now working perfectly, it's back to normal so that's a big concern out of the way and uh, the bilge pumps in and that's all go going fine um, a bit of a whinge about the manufacturer changing the uh, position of the holes on the mounting plate but hey, I guess somebody in an office has decided to remodel them um, but hey, there it goes uh, couple of things uh, I thought I'd show you they're not really projects but I think they're really cool I needed some outside lights for um, the cockpit so I bought these they just look like light bulbs with hooks on the top um, LED and you can charge them with a USB or they come with their own little solar panels so you can put the, the panels out in the Sun and, and charge these uh, they give out three different modes of light um, the bright one is like daylight when you're in the cockpit so I have it set on the medium one and the uh, low one when I try to take a, a photograph of the light it turned the flash on, on on the camera so it is quite um, uh, quite low but the medium setting is fantastic for the um, for the cockpit and they're remote controlled so you can turn them on and off and change the mode, uh, the mode settings which I think is fantastic and they were cheap amazing the other thing I recently bought which Bill kindly brought down for me was a small 300 watt inverter um, this is what I'm going to use to run uh, the Starlink and the PC the laptop it saves me having to switch on the big 2000 watt inverter because that does drag down a bit of power um, and again this was cheap as chips I've tried it it works it's got two USB ports as well so I can work on the computer run the Starlink and charge up phones or cameras at the same time absolutely fantastic and it just plugs into a um, cigarette um, lighter you could actually wire it in um, permanently and then the other bit of good news today oh, I actually did my back in yesterday helping a friend move all his stuff so I've been moving around a bit gingerly today I've got my Mexican temporary residence card it came through today 
Um, valid for a year, I've got to renew it for another three this time next year. But that process was um, really simple. So today's been a fairly easy day because I have, uh, I have actually put my back out. Um, it's quite painful. I've taken some ibuprofen. Hopefully it'll be better tomorrow. Uh, it has to be because tomorrow is the new anchor chain day. So we've got to get it down from Bill's car, get it down to the dock and take the old uh, anchor off, take the chain out, replace it all, put new shackles on and reload it all back into the anchor locker. Um, that might be uh, in the next video. It depends on um, how long this current video is, is taken up in time. But uh, that I'm really looking forward to. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with 300 feet of old chain. Although there are quite a few boats out on the Malacon anchored out. Maybe they'll want it. I'll stick it on the net in the morning and um, see if anybody's prepared to offer, I don't know, 50 bucks. I mean, the chain's actually in good condition. Uh, it's just a bit rusty and a few of the links are just starting to show some wear. But um, there it is. Um, somebody can have a bargain. Well, thanks for watching the video again. I uh, really appreciate it. Appreciate it if you would subscribe, hit the notification button, all the normal stuff. It's really helpful if you do. Um, you don't get hassled or pestered or get inundated with emails. You just get notified when the next uh, post comes out. But uh, yeah, great. Thanks very much for your support.